the TV3 Action Arena. Hi everybody, I'm Steve Mayer and welcome tonight to Union. We're under the lights for a high school soccer battle between the Union Farmers 4-2 and two on the season and the Pingree School coming in undefeated at 6-0. and oh. Joining me is John Marcy and what we have here is a real good high school soccer battle. Well, it turns up to be a real great game. Of course, they're uh, two schools that have been neighboring schools for years. Now Fingery's up in Martinsville, but uh, they've had a rivalry over the years, and I think tonight we should see a real great battle. Two teams that are well coached and always play a tough brand of soccer. About five years ago, they used to battle it out for the Union County Championship. That's when Pingree was in Hillside. So both teams indirectly know each other very well. Well, Jim Jeske and, uh, and Miller Brogliari, between the two of them, I think close to 600 wins. I think that alone tells you uh, what kind of coaching we're going to have and uh, how much they know about each other. Of course, they also play a lot with each other, these players on the various and sundry Sunday-type teams and 18-and-under uh, type teams. So they're, they know each other, and they play the good soccer, and we can expect a good game because of that. Pingree comes in undefeated at 6-0. and They can score some goals. Number 18 for Pingree can score a lot of goals. His name is Scott Ametti. Well, Scott Ametti's a tough ball player. He plays up in the middle, uh, loves to go one-on-one. -on -one. He feels if he can go one-on-one, -on -one, he's going to beat most anybody. Uh, he's a big player. He's uh, physically a very imposing player for a soccer player, and uh, that alone should make him a little bit intimidating. Uh, He's a senior, loves to play, and I think he's going to be a good addition to some Division I school next year. Pingree can score goals, and we should see some goals into the back of the net tonight. Union's had some problems through the first six games. They've only scored eight goals, but tonight they're going to be looking towards their leading scorer, Mike Shaw. Well, this is going to be interesting because Mike plays both center halfback, which controls offense and defense, and he also sometimes plays in the goal. And right to this minute, after talking to Jim Jeske, we don't know exactly where we'll see him as yet. So... If we see him up front, we can expect Union to be putting the ball in the net. If we see him back in the goal, we can expect a very low-scoring team uh, game because uh, Mike seems to spur on that defense, and uh, we already know with that 4-2 and two and the low-scoring team that they are, the defense is very strong. We've got two veteran coaches going tonight on Pingree's side. It's Miller Bugliari. He is in his 30th year. Jim Jeske in his 29th year. A lot of good soccer action ahead. We'll be back with the start. Union and Pingree tonight on the Action Arena. Don't go away. There's lots of great TV on cable this fall. Catch it all in The Cable Guy. Romance, danger, impossible feats. We've got action to keep you on the edge of your seats. Then for the whole family, classic tales, adventure, and old-fashioned fun. And great variety shows, music, comedy, and much more. So turn to The Cable Guide for what's on, when it's on, and where it's on. And look for our special fall preview issue coming in October. Take one uptight father. I have a very tough day ahead. Take his chilled-out son. I wish I could change places with you. Well, I wish I could, too. Take an ancient mystical spell and turn the father into the son and vice versa. Awesome! You're six foot two with the brain of an 11 year old. Judge Reinhold. Do I look all right? In Vice Versa. It's a Freudian nightmare. But it's a dream come true. Family fun conveniently scheduled and delivered right to you on Viewer's Choice. Welcome back to Union High School. Underneath the lights tonight, a beautiful evening. Temperatures right now in the high 60s. Wind blowing slightly shouldn't be a factor tonight as Pingree, dressed in the blue uniforms with the white trim, goes against Union in the white uniforms with the maroon trim, and we're underway. Union High School comes in at 4-2 on the season. 
Pingree undefeated at 6-0, but the big question mark has been Pingree's competition. They've yet to face a caliber team like Union, so tonight should be their first test. And Union, we talked earlier in the open about Mike Shaw, and we found out at kickoff time, Mike Shaw is playing in the goal. So we can look for the defensive techniques of Union today, rather than that offensive thrust. But uh, I'm sure if they put a couple in the net right away, we might see him come out and get up there and try to add to it. The best defense is a good offense. Jim Jeske said he expects Shaw, if he is in the goal, to probably start the first 10 to 15 minutes, and then he would move him back out when Shaw is on the playing field, not in the goalie uh, position, he'll wear number seven. And we had our first whistle. It was an offsides. Pingree trying to clear the ball over the defense. The defender had fallen down. Pingree player not expecting it ran to the offsides position before the pass was taken. We'll set the lineups for you for Union on defense. For Pingree, they come in at 6-0. Their forward line, Anthony Bugliari, Peter Ackerman, and Scott Ametti. The midfielders are Owen Neary, Tom Loggio, and Michael Pence. And on defense, Brian Co Crosby, Tom Russin, Ned Southworth, and Peter Rosenbauer. In goal for Pingree, it's Doug Proudman. And of course, you know me. Our referees on the near side is Ray Matlos, and on the far side of the field, Peter Smith, both members of the SCOA chapter. And speaking like a true referee, John. Oh, I've got to put a plug in for my partners out there. Goodness only knows I might have to work with them next week. <laughs> Pingree on the aggressive here. Ackerman tried to move it into the middle, but Union sweeps it away. The Hi Union High School Farmers so far have played impressively. Their only losses of the season to two quality teams, St. Benedict's and Scotch Plains. And, of course, Benedict's the defending parochial B state champion, and Scotch Plains the defending group three and number one team in the state last year. In fact, I believe the number two team was St. Benedict's. So to lose to those two squads, no disgrace. Quality teams last year and also quality squads again this season. As you saw off that last play in the middle, Bulari was on goal, but again, Shaw was there to make a fine play, and Mike Shaw will be somebody we'll be keeping an eye on throughout the entire game. Right you, now, right now, a lot of midfield action just to uh, feel, feeling each other out at this point. Beautiful facility here at Union High School. Last year, the lights installed here, used for football mostly. This is the second soccer game being played on this field, and this field is smaller than Union is used to. The field goes 108 yards by 68 yards. How much of a factor might that be? Really not too much here, uh, and I'll explain why in a minute, as, as we have a great play and a chance for Union here. The field is, is good and wide here, as you can see that we said 68 yards wide. The ideal is 120 by 75. In high school, a lot of coaches like to shorten the field a little because the players are not really up to their full physical potential that they will uh, later on. I think it's a great, great dimensions for high school soccer. Well, Yari looked to make the move in the middle, but it's cleared away. Mike Lonergan back for Union. We can. Oh, Here great play. Union on the break, and the Farmers move it ahead. Concalves has it knocked away. Tom Russin there defensively for Pingree. Union showing some great moves right up the middle today. And again, Mike Shaw told me before the game they have some great, great strength up the middle. He feels if they can move it up the middle, that's where it's at. He also feels that, well, I won't say he feels, but generally talking to some other people that Union's weaknesses, if they are there, are maybe to the wings. There's a little youth and inexperience there, so you, we might look for them moving the ball up the middle today. Scott Amedi looks to cross, and it's knocked away. Defensively, Robbie Emmel there for Union. Robbie did a great job on that. If he didn't get the header on, it was a, an easy shot for the, uh, for the big blue uh, attacker. Again, much of the play so far here has been in the midfield. Both teams just trying to work their way Union, of course, has had some trouble scoring some goals this season. Just eight goals in six games. Pingree's had an easy time scoring goals. 
Here's Mario Castro, who's been Union's leading scorer so far this year with four goals. Castro controls, sends it to the middle. Defensively taken away by Pingri, and now the ball out of bounds and we'll get a throw in. Union doing a nice job. They're marking very closely. As soon as Pingri gets a hold of the ball, there's a Union player right on top of you, not giving him a chance to set up to get the good pass. This may be what Pingri hasn't seen this year, is this close marking game. I said earlier that this, these are two teams that are willing to go at each other. I think we're going to see a physical game. Not dirty, but physical. Ahmedi ahead to Bugliari, and Bugliari now looks to control. Bugliari marked nicely by Jason Sitman, sends out cross. Tom Loggio there, and Loggio runs it down. Loggio still controlling. And now it goes out of bounds, and Union will take over. But again, Pingree having some trouble there, converging with two men into the corner. I get the close marking of Union impresses me this early. We've uh, already commented on their defense. Uh, and I, I think that's going to be a key, as long as they can stay with that the whole game. I heard in the background from our field, Mike Miller Brillari yelling to his players, you've got to pass the ball, you've got to pass the ball. They're not used to seeing somebody this close. And there they just found the open man. Peter Ackerman shoots and scores, and Pingree leads one to nothing. And as soon as we said it, Pingree found that open man. You'll see the lead pass come up. It comes into him. He dribbles upfield, waits for the keeper to come out. Shaw really never had a chance. Shaw came out to cut the angle down. You'll see here the pass comes out. He dribbles upfield, found the first open man. You'll see Shaw come into your side of your screen as he comes out, takes the shot, goes to the right of Shaw in, and it's one nothing. Approximately six minutes and 40 seconds into the first quarter. So Peter Ackerman with the goal. That's his sixth goal of the season. He's a junior, 5'11", 165, and Pingree on the board. We mentioned Union's problems scoring some goals, but their defense has been fantastic so far this year. That's only the sixth goal they've given up in now their seventh game. That, that, is, that is impressive. And uh, as we said, that the, the, we're talking about their defense. Right there was the first mistake they made. They, they left Ackerman open in the middle. Pingree, the experienced ball club they are, found the man in the middle. Ackerman took advantage of it, and we had the one nothing game. And that will be the key tonight as you get a look at some of the Union cheerleaders who are taking in the action as well. But a key tonight will be to take advantage, either for Pingree or for Union, of mistakes. Absolutely. Uh, of course, in any sport, I think it's the key on the other team's mistakes. Ideally, every team plays a perfect game. We are human beings. We make mistakes, and that's what we have to key on in the game. Pingree did it that time. Let's see if Union can bring it back. We've still got a lot of soccer left tonight. Ackerman, who we were told really can hammer the ball, didn't have to hammer it that time. He kind of finessed it past Shaw, and Pingree has the lead. Ackerman again was ahead of the field. Shaw will come out to make the easy play. I think I think they're going to have to mark Ackerman a lot closer. It seems to me that he likes to play right up with that last defender. And uh, we know that he he can do it when he has the ball. He just there we see Pingree making the mistake on defense, but there's nobody there to take up the ball on that and they just get it back to the keeper easily. Another thing we should watch out for is that Ameti, the goal scorer, came in with all the headlines, and Union's defense will be looking to mark possibly an Ameti, and therefore a guy like Ackerman can slip by and score some goals. Absolutely. I, I think uh, I think every coach likes to have that star player. We remember uh, Lino DiQualo last year from Scotch Plains, but yet because Lino was so dangerous, Sometimes he'd be marked by two or three men, and that would leave somebody else open. Lino was good at distributing the ball, like Amenti says, he likes to distribute the ball. And in this particular case, Ackerman was the man that got it distributed to him, and he put it in the net. So that makes him doubly dangerous. Just to keep you up to date on Lino DiQualo, now at Rutgers and starting for the Scarlet Knights. Of course, Bobby Riasso, Scarlet Knights, a national power, a quarter finalist last year in Division I. And on the high school level, it looks like Scotch Plains is kind of picking up where they left off last year, winners of the state championship. And so far this year, undefeated, looking quite good. And they have a victory under their belt against this Union team, two to nothing. Jim Jeske said prior to the game, he thought they might be even tougher than last year. And of course, I had heard, I haven't seen Scotch Plains this year, but uh, apparently the Scotch Plains is uh, 
building on what they had last year and uh, Tom Bresnitsky's team uh, looking to repeat. So that'll be a trip. Ray Matlow's telling them, calm down a little bit. We don't need that kind of a play. Direct kick again, Ackerman with the ball. Nice cross. Looked across, Logio there, and Logio has it knocked away. Bulyari comes back, but then clearing it out is Elias Patheos. If you've just joined us, Pingree scored six minutes in. Peter Ackerman with the goal, and Pingree leads it one to nothing. Interesting, what is the nickname of Pingree? We, we asked many of the players, I guess going way back, it's the Big Blue. Yet, the players don't recognize it, and when I asked them before, because we wanted to see whether that was still the nickname, they said, we don't care. We, don't, we really don't care. We don't have a nickname. Call us the Pingree School. So, the Big Blue or the School, and uh, we will uh, call throughout the day. As you saw, Mike Shaw now comes out of the game, out of the goal. The new goalkeeper is Dan DeMarco, who stands 5'10", 165. So, Jim J And the time is unofficial, but we'll try to keep you up to date as best we can. We know our score is official, and Pingree, with their early goal, leads it 1-0. Union High School with good experience. This is Robbie Emmel, a senior, a four-year starter. He sends it into the middle, looking for David Shaw. Out of bounds it goes, and Union will get a... And coming out of the game now will be Mike Lonergan. So Shaw's back in the game for Jim Jeske. Okay, just what we said. Now we see we see Shaw playing both positions. Goal and now coming up to a center halfback position. Castro centers in the middle. Opportunity for Union. A shot. David Shaw's shot deflected out. And now it's clear. So Union had an opportunity. Shaw was parked in the middle and couldn't get the shot off. And Shaw getting into the game, making his presence felt up front now. We've already seen him back in goal. We see him up front. Bulyari sends ahead, and now Pingree is on the move. Here come the Big Blue or the school, whatever you want to call them. We're in color TV today, so let's call them the Big Blue. Opportunity in the middle. Ackerman on the doorstep, and Ackerman fanned on the shot. And as he, as he turned, he might have injured himself for a minute. Owen Neary with the centering pass. Ackerman was there one-on-one -on -one with DeMarco, but Ackerman had trouble controlling as some of the fans show their enthusiasm for Union soccer. Uh, Union O is a great sports town, and they support their team. We know well about the Union Farmers football team. And Union Farmers, their soccer team, an underrated team, but always been a powerhouse. I mean... Jim Jeske's over 200, I believe it's 295 wins over the years, and, and 295 wins, that's, that's a great, great uh, winning percentage over the years. It is a, a great credit to Jim Jeske, and he has coached over 500 games, 285 wins, 175 losses, 62 times. Tremendous. Absolutely tremendous. Both coaches have certainly been around, and we don't want to say that in a negative term, but uh, they've seen soccer progress throughout New Jersey, and they were there when it started, and now it's grown to be a really super sport. Well, we, we've been fortunate this year. Our first broadcast this year, we saw we saw uh, George Stiefold from Verona, the winningest active coach in the state of New Jersey. Now we see Miller Bulyari and Jim Jeske going to head-to-head -head with each other. Two more the coaches that are up there. And of course, later on this year, we'll see Gene, Ch Gene Chisowitz from Columbia. So we're seeing some, not just good soccer, but we're seeing the reason we have the good soccer, the great coaches. Anthony Bugliari sends into the middle. Anthony wears number nine for Pingree. And yes, he is the son of Miller, the head coach. And Miller, in his 30th year at Pingree, what a record, 371 wins, 52 losses. 
And we have a jumping in foul against the big blue. They jumped in on the header, really didn't have a play at the ball, took the man out, it results in a direct kick for the Farmers. Robbie Emmel takes the direct kick. Doug Proudman makes the save coming out of the goal. Jim Jeske, who never shows much of emotion on the bench, just then said, where's the man? The keeper fumbled it. There was nobody there to make up for that mistake. Nobody on the doorstep right here. Pingree looking to make the move. Ackerman trips and falls. Now we get a whistle. What we had was a hand pass with the ball. That's totally illegal. Ray Matlos with the call saw it right away. Pingree's going to have a great opportunity here from only about uh, 20 yards out. Marco trying to set the wall, the three-man wall, about 10 yards away from the ball. Ometti here will take the shot. Scott Ometti, two goals in each game so far this season, shoots it high and over the goal post. And you saw it bounce back to the field. That hit the football crossbar, which is in the back of the soccer goal. Watch it again here. Ometti's shot just goes high. Many shot, which you couldn't see from this angle, he took with the outside of his foot, and rather than swinging to DeMarco's right, actually swung to his left, which is, and it was a good hard shot. If he kept it low, he had a very good chance of putting it in. So Union averts that time a hungry effort to score their second goal. Not officially, we show just under four minutes left here in the first quarter, which has already been a pretty good action-packed quarter of soccer. And Pingree, we rarely see in the state ratings. Uh, they are a prep school, and Miller Billiard really doesn't care. Ratings don't mean a thing. He wants to win the championship. There's an outstanding opportunity here. Pingree has won the championships in the past. Look at uh, the goalkeeper, DeMarco. He's way out of goal to make a fine play. Well, DeMarco came way out, sort of misjudged on that one, but was able to get a foot on the ball, get it cleared. Castro tried to send it ahead, and we're going to get a whistle for a handball outside. Steve, we'll make a good referee out of you yet. You caught that one. <laughs> that one wasn't too tough to catch. <laughs> Even the farmer, the, uh, the mascot of Union High School, could have caught that one. I guess that's not the farmer. Oh, great opportunity here. Into the middle, and it's stripped aside. Again, defensively, Pingree plays well. Another shot by Castro went wide to the right. And now Union playing up with a defense. That ball gets passed. There was a man right there. He couldn't get around just in time. It was cleared out. Comes back in with a second shot. The halfbacks, meaning Shaw, coming up to take that follow-up shot. And there's Castro in your picture. Just a junior, but already the leading scorer on the Union Farmers with four goals this year. Getting back, that was not a farmer, of course. That was the GOAT, the Union GOAT. Into the middle again. Castro looking to head it. Couldn't find the handle. Ball is run down and run down well. This is Mike Rispoli. And we're going to get a throw in. And it looks like it's going to be for, oh no, it's going to be a, a direct kick. It's a direct kick here. Sent it to the middle and a nice job again by the Pingree defense to steer it aside. Pingree controls Tom Loggio. Loggio did a nice job turning that ball upfield and then bringing it past midfield. Turned it back to Ackerman. And here's Bugliari who will control. Outside it! Outside it, you can't! Union now on the aggressive. Rispoli looked to send it ahead to Castro. And again, here comes Pingree the other way. The Pingree defense showing that their defense also was something to be uh, shouted about. Easy save for DeMarco. We're approaching the end of the first quarter. Pingree leads it 1-0. Ball's kept in. Although the Pingree players tried to convince uh, Ray Matlos, but Ray was right on the line to make that non-call. Castro going into the corner, looking to cross. Nobody's there. Proudman comes out and makes the easy play. And he let the ball go over the end line, so uh, we will have a goal kick for Pingree. Pingree lost in their county tournament final last year to Bridgewater West, so when you talk about getting the championships and possibly winning them, they're always on the doorstep. Last year, they won the state independent B title by beating Lawrenceville 3-1. to one. So there is a great example of a team that might not be in the ratings, yet a team that can win. Well, they've, they've sure had their experience over the years, no question about that. 
They've, uh, they've won, I believe it's uh, 15 state titles in the last 30 years, every other year. That's not a bad record. I think many, many, many schools would take that sort of a record. 60th year of soccer at Pingree. 60th year, 15 state titles. That's one every four years. That's an incredible record, incredible. The Un unofficially, we <laughs> show that the first quarter has expired, and I think any moment now we will hear the whistle. And you heard John's musical watch go off in the background. My official referee's watch. What is the song on the official referee's watch? Not really. It's just a high-low tone, but uh, okay. when we have these earphones on, it's kind of difficult. And there it is. So the official referee's watch almost right to the second as that's the end of the first quarter of action. Pingree on the goal by Peter Ackerman leads it one to nothing. See if they want to do that TV3 cheer. Are you looking for information, discussion, and even debate about local, national, and worldly issues, events, and people that affect you? Then join me, Lenworth Gunther, your host of Impact, a bold new show on Suburban Cablevision Community Access Channel 32, every Monday evening at 7.05 p.m. Tune in and turn on. Remember, Channel 32, every Monday at 7.05. It's hot, lively, and to the point. Come on in and register. For Police Academy 5, you'll laugh till it hurts with the latest cop capers of your favorite boys and girls in blue, including Jones, Hightower, Tackleberry, it doesn't even break it. Hooks, Stop, you and Harris in Miami Beach. Leave the swimming area now, mister. Police Academy 5. For fun and guns under the sun, order Police Academy 5. Assignment Miami Beach. Difficult to hear the cheer, but I believe they were cheering TV3 in some way or another, and uh, the union cheerleaders doing a great job down there. We have arrived. We have our own cheer. <laughs> and we'll have to try to get them to do another cheer before the day is over. The union high school cheerleaders cheering under the lights tonight. And oftentimes they're underrated, but I think cheerleaders are important to not just soccer, but to all sports. They really really add a lot to it and uh, for a team or, or a town such as Union where you have a great following the cheerleaders are very important and I don't think too many people will dispute what I'm about to say but I really think that uh, school spirit is down and, and way down in with uh, efforts like cheerleaders and people just in the school great fans and they really help bringing out school spirit as Jim Jeske looks on Walking the sidelines now in his 29th year. Real legend here at Union High School. Also a great marathon runner as well. Here's a guy that's been in the New York Marathon, Boston Marathon. And there's Miller Bugliari on the other side. His name's synonymous with Pingree Soccer. Well, Miller Bugliari is Pingree Soccer. It's, that's the only name I've ever known uh, at Pingree when I played soccer in high school. And we've talked many times about when I played soccer, so we know Miller's been there a long time. Dating yourself there, John. Class of 1962. The Hilltoppers. Also dating Miller Bugliari. All right, here's an opportunity for Pingree. Ackerman looking for a second goal. He centers it defensively. Union looks to make the play, and they do, and that shot goes high. Well, that's a, with the shot that went high, Pingree was right there. Union's defense, though, up to the task. Watch again. You'll see DeMarco come way out of the net. At this point, he's already out of the picture completely. I think DeMarco, you'll see at that point, they try to come in. Amenti takes the shot, goes a little bit high. But DeMarco twice. We saw it late in the uh, first quarter. And now we hear it again in the second quarter. I think he's got to judge that a little bit closer, either to stay in or come out sooner. 
But certainly Pingree uh, getting goal hungry here in the opening minute of the uh, second quarter. Michael Pence that time looked to make a run at goal, but it was steered aside. Gaining back to that great play by the Union defense, give a lot of the oh, credit yes. to Elias Pathetos. He made a real nice play to steer the ball aside. He's a senior, 5'11", 150, and give Pathetos a lot of credit that time. He made a real nice play. Well, he did. He cleared it out to Amenti. Amenti took the shot in high, we commented, but if that ball had stayed in there, somebody would have punched it in. To get it further out, Amenti really didn't have much choice but to shoot high because otherwise he would have gone through a crowd of players. There we see Elias. Well done. Pengri has had numerous opportunities so far, whereas Union really hasn't had an opportunity to score a goal so far. And the Farmers will look for that opportunity, and they hope to get it soon. Possibly here could be the start of something as the Farmers control. Arthur Kinkalvis sends ahead. Again, Pingree's defense has played well thus far. Second quarter of action. Well, Pingree's defense really hasn't been to test tested with a sustained drive from uh, Union. I think uh, right what I said earlier about the good offense being a good defense has been the keynote for uh, Pingree to this point because they've really had it in Union's half of the field for most of the game. Will Pappas into the middle. Again, Concavis comes through for Union with a nice defensive play by Tom Loggia. Right now, most of the play in the midfield. Both teams just waiting for that opportunity. Pingree could get one here and we get a whistle. We have the, we have a, we have a, I believe we have a clock stoppage at this point. There's going to be a yellow card issued by Ray Matlos. The uh, foul was a little bit on the violent nature, and I think Ray Matlow says, hey, it's time to calm down. What's going to have to happen at this point is with uh, Mike, I believe it was Mike Lonegren with the trip, tripped awful hard, he's going to have to be replaced. When there's a yellow card, you must leave the game. You cannot enter again until the next normal substitution. And that's what it was. It's an unsportsmanlike conduct. So Lonergan will sit down, and Jason Sitman will come in to replace him. Lonergan is a senior. Ackerman, who's got the goal, sends to the middle. Kinkavis just knocks it aside. We'll get a throw in for Pingree. The Pingree school, 6-0, opened up with a win against Petty. They've beaten Immaculata, Newark Academy, Hun, Mountain Lakes, and Montclair Kimberly Academy. Of course, Montclair Kimberly and Newark Academy, the only two schools in the TV3 area. Both schools this year having down years. Last year, uh, Newark Academy was a prep state champion, beating, I believe, Pennington. And we saw Newark Academy last year on the TV3 Action Arena. They're a fine ball club. Uh, Jeff Caker has done a fine job there for years. This year, kind of falling on hard times, but they'll be back again. Mike Shaw started in goal, crosses to the middle. Looking to run it down, Mario Polita for Union. And Union will get the throw in here. A couple of substitutions coming in now for the Union High School Farmers. Number 23 coming in, Anthony Purcell, just the freshman. And he strolls into the game for the first time. Purcell, just a freshman, is the first freshman, along with Jeremy Cohen, to start a season off for Union. And Union has had freshman play. These are the first freshmen that ever started the season. And that, in itself, in a group four school, is rather odd to see, but it says a lot for these two players that Jim Jeske shows that much faith in them. I think you're going to see a call on the obstruction here, and it's going to be uh, Union's ball. And what happened on that particular play was Union did not take their indirect kick from an obstruction at the point where the foul took place. Ray Matlos immediately giving the whistle is going to have it placed back to where it actually took place. And that's exactly what's happening. So Union will now get a 
second try, even though they probably didn't want it here. No, what they really wanted was to try to catch the Pingry defense asleep on that, but uh, that didn't happen. And as we have found out so far, that's tough to do. Pingry has played up to the task so far today, and here come the Big Blue on a break. Well, I, so far from what I have seen, I'm very impressed with this Pingree team. Will Pappas on the far side, and it looks like we get a whistle there. It, we do, and I believe we're going to have another yellow card. Again, the yellow card to go against Union, and this to go against Nick Voluminous as you look at Miller Bugliari looking on. And again, this was the same sort of thing. The foul was a little bit too aggressive, and we said early on that this is going to be probably a physical game. The referees early on telling them, knock it off, let's play soccer out there. We expect contact, but not that kind of a contact. Ackerman has an opportunity, but just couldn't control. Kicked it a little too far ahead, and it looked like there may have been some wrongdoings inside as well. It looked like there was a little bit of a hold, but neither referee on such a quick play would really have a chance to see it because the break went past them. And uh, Jim Jeske now <laughs> complaining to the official, please, please. He said, don't blow the whistle when I have the advantage like that. Sometimes, uh, sometimes a referee is sort of damned if he doesn't, damned if he doesn't, because if he calls that play, then uh, then he's the coach feels the advantage of being a takeaway. If he doesn't call the play, hey, my player was fouled. Aren't you going to call it? So you're really you're really in a no-win situation. Handball the call against Union, so Pingree will now take over. But a situation like that, it does pay maybe to to show your beliefs just because the next time it happens you might convince a referee to go the other way oh yes i uh looking down on the field and i see several coaches today and myself being a referee the, the coach earns his pay he has to play the referee and try to they're part of the game too and if uh if a coach can bring something to the referee's attention and gain advantage by it later on then he's doing his job Purcell controlling the freshman into the middle, and Proudman comes out to make the save. What a fine-looking move by Anthony Purcell, and if that's any indication of what to expect over the next four years, Union might have themselves a player. Oh, Proudman made the save. Oh, we have another breakaway, and it looks like Ackerman again. Ackerman shoots, and it almost went in. Ackerman had the same sort of play that he had early on in the game, but... DeBarco came out to cut the angle down as Shaw did in the first quarter. However, in this particular case, just as the ball was about to cross the goal line, the defense came in to clear it. Eric Spudnicki made a great defensive play. Last year, he started every game. We weren't there for every game, but I doubt whether he made a play as big as that one. That one was on the goal line. Great play by Spudnicki. And you see 10 to 12 yards out. DeMarco looking back. And of course, DeMarco after that play does make a nice save on this one. But Nicky certainly doing a great job on defense on that to save, a, save it from being a 2 nothing game. Union, David Shaw looking to run down the ball, but again, the Pingry defense is tough. So Spudnicki makes a play and saves what could have been a Pingry 2 to nothing lead. Rather surprising looking here, Steve, that uh, we do, for soccer on a weeknight, have a fairly good crowd. How about that one there? The shot by a Union defender off the back of Robbie Ello. It almost slipped in. Yeah, and if it didn't slip in, it certainly would have uh, been a corner kick. We might have a jump in or a low bridge. In this case, we're going to have a jumping in foul, and the ball will go to, uh, I believe that was Rusin with the... Uh, Jumping in foul. Ackerman. As Ackerman went to make the move, it looks like we may get a tripping call. Yep, that's exactly what we got was a trip. Ackerman has been a big factor in the first half. We told you so much about Ameti, but Ackerman is the name we're calling most often. It seems that way. He has really made it happen so far. A couple of nice rushes on goal. 
Here they look in the middle for Ackerman. He heads it, and a nice save by DeMarco. But DeMarco does make the save and carries the ball over the end line. It will be a corner kick. And Henry with the substitutions. DeMarco made the play, but in his effort to control the ball, stepped over the end line, and we will get a corner kick here for Pingree. First corner kick of the day. You mentioned Ackerman. I am so impressed with this man's speed. Just tremendous speed. He, he has made a couple of nice moves, but he just is outrunning the Union defense. Watch Ackerman. He'll be in the center of your screen as the corner kick will be taken by Tom Loggio. Loggio, a senior, sends it in. A little bit wide. Brings that too far out, about uh, 30 yards out. That's not a My ideal place for a corner kick is between 6 and 10 yards in front of the goal. So the first corner kick of the night does no damage for Pingree. Pingree still leads Union, one to nothing. The goal six minutes in for Peter Ackerman. But for the Union defense, it might be two or even three to nothing. There have been some great opportunities for Pingree slash Big Blue. Slash school. Right. Here comes Union. Mike Shaw, co-captain, sends ahead. Union on the move, and here is the freshman, Anthony Purcell. Purcell looks to cross and does, but it's knocked away nicely. Good defensive play in the middle by Michael Pence. Purcell did a nice job on that, bringing the ball back to the middle. A lot of, lot of moxie for a freshman. Again, you're not going to find the field wide open for possible breakouts as the field that we're playing on, a little shorter, not as wide. And uh, this, the Union High School football field, but because of the lights and the real nice facility, this game being played here instead of, of Union High School's regular soccer field. That is correct, and of course, we are very grateful to Union for, for that. Um, I might add, though, we, we talk about the 120 idea, the 75 width. Uh, you rarely see that in high school. The 68-yard width that we see right here is really ideal width for a high school soccer field. I would like to see maybe five, six more yards, but uh, to have a 108-yard field is, is more than adequate. Keeping some of the statistics down on the field, one of the managers on the Pingry side, so far, she's got that goal by Ackerman all penciled in as her team leads the Union High School Farmers one to another. And that's the only statistic that really counts at the end of the game. And Kavis has some problems there, and we get a whistle as he tried to make his move out of a pass. He was charged, and what we're going to see is a Union kick. One player was playing him very nicely, but another player came in just as he made the pass and charged into him. It'll be a direct kick for Union. And Calvez is a co-captain, tri-captains here at Union High School. Excellent cross. In the middle, and look at that save by Doug Crabb and Crabb way, way up in the air on that one. And he had to, too, because there were Union players coming in there. If he didn't get his hands on the ball, there was certainly going to be a Union head on it because it, I think it actually floated past the defenders. A little bit of a charge from behind on that. That was more or less a message called by the referees uh, that we don't want. Uh... Oh, he's calling it the other way. I'm surprised on that one. I don't always agree with my partners, but they're the ones making the call, and that's what counts. You don't agree with a referee's call? Hey, I can be a fan, too, once in a while. I may not agree with them, but there's one thing. The referee's call is the one that counts. You respect them. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I think, uh, believe it or not, we hear a lot of joy in our field mics pick up uh, coaches getting on them. But for the most part, there's a mutual respect that goes there. They, they realize that the, ref the referees have a tough job. Uh, they don't have instant replay, as the NFL certainly shows us day in and day out, that uh, the, the replay can show some differences. But uh, you have to make that sap snap judgment on a very, very fast game. But I think the NFL shows you one thing. It also shows you how great some of these officials are. Because That's correct. To catch something in a split second the way they do, and as often as they do, is, is a quite a, uh, 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 a credit to their profession. And I think when they play that replay, it usually the play stands something like eight out of ten times. 
and uh, we're, we're not seeing quite as many of them coming now as we might have imagined. And uh, I really have no feelings towards the instant replay one way or the other because uh, a referee is human. He can make mistakes, and, and, and if, uh, if it catches that mistake, well, so be it. We talked earlier, that's what the game is all about. We capitalize on each other's mistakes, and the referee is part of the game, too. And if you capitalize on the referee's mistake, that's part of the game. Okay, my political feelings about sports. And we'll have to give another referee some equal time now, uh, as uh, this is the political season. <laughs> have to give those candidates equal time. Well, I guess in this case, it would have to be the coach. <laughs> That's true. Union High School has a bit of a streak going. Their last five games have all been with a final score of 2-0. Ever since their opener, a 2-1 win against Summit, they've lost to St. Benedict's and Scotch Plains 2-0, and they have beaten Westfield, Irvington, and Elizabeth 2-0. And of course, that Westfield wing win is a lot bigger than you may think because Westfield just turned around the other day. And as I look down the field, I do see Walt Leon now down there from Westfield. Westfield beat Kearney the other day, and everybody knows that Kearney is a state powerhouse, I believe, the defending Group 4 state champion. And uh, that's saying a lot. Union, a member of the Swatchung Conference with schools like the defending number one in Group 3 state champion, Scotch Plains, Kearney, the defending Group 4 state champion, Westfield the year before the number one in defending Group 4 state champion. So you're, you're, you're seeing tremendous soccer, as you always do here at, uh, in the Swatchung Conference, this Union County area. Nice cross. Union in the last four to five minutes has seemed to have Brought the play to the uh, to Pingree a little bit, but Pingree's been able to bottle up the middle and really keep those opportunities to a minimum. Ahmedi now with some open field. Scott Ahmedi is a dangerous player. He gets to Ackerman, and as we found out, Ackerman is dangerous as well. Into the middle. I think we have an offside. It's Peter Smith with the call, pointing to approximately the midfield area where the ball was crossed to. Ahmedi offside, so Union will take back. And you're right in saying that Union has controlled the action. Most of the action lately has been in front of goalie Doug Proven of Pingree. Pingree does have the lead in the soccer game. They scored in the first quarter. Maybe you will get your political chance to get back at me. I just found out the other day, later on in the season, TV3 is doing a broadcast where I will be the referee. Uh -huh. So either you or Paul or say. Matt and Hugh Albanicius, and I know Hugh as an ex-coach <laughs> will certainly put his two cents worth so in there. That's what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to get Hugh on the telecast so Hugh can get his equal time. And Hugh certainly will. <laughs> You can guarantee I won't say a bad word the whole day, John. <laughs> well, we just hope it's a good game. Touts up to be. We've talked a uh, great deal about this Watch Young Conference. Later on the season, we'll see Columbia High School and the Iron Hills Conference. Of course, we well know Columbia's reputation over the years. And the Iron Hills Conference certainly up this year. Columbia, of course, the finest team, I would think, in the entire state, given what they have returning. Well. A lot of people have told me, and I haven't seen Columbia yet, and I'll have my opportunity day after tomorrow at Morris Knowles, that they may, in fact, be one of the strongest Columbia teams ever. And that is something else, considering because the great teams strong. that Columbia has had. Gene Chiswitz always does a great job. Here's Scott Amenti into the middle. A good defensive play there for Union, and Union looks to break out. And they do. Pass is sent ahead. Shaw staying with the play, stays on the ball. And again, distributes it nicely as every good center man should. And you can see the experience of a Shaw. He really gets the ball under control and then sends it to a teammate and Union controls here. The Farmer is looking to get a goal to knot things up as we approach the end of the first half. Keep side, Approximately, and we're going off of John's official time here. We've got about a minute to go in half number one. However, that shall be unofficial because we've had two clock stoppages here for the uh, administering of the yellow cards. And of course, the administration of the yellow card does stop the, stop the time. And that is kept on the field as most often it is. Ball is headed towards the net. 
Ned Southworth knocks it aside and out of bounds it goes. That was a that was a great opportunity there because Doug Proudman started to come out of the goal on that. Centering into the middle, Southworth again knocks it away and now it's cleared out by Pingree. Again the ball out of bounds and this time we get whistles and that time it means that's the end of the first half. So an exciting first half of action. Pingree's had many opportunities. They've been able to score once, and for Miller Bolliari, his team leads 1-0. Back with the halftime festivities after this. Jersey's oldest recreational landmark. Since 1889, simply known as the Canoe Club. And today, headquarters for windsurfing and small sailboats. Open every day, except Tuesday. Welcome back to Union High School. The score at halftime, Pingree won and Union nothing. And John, your impressions of the first half? Well, I was very impressed with that Pingree offense. Uh, Ackerman up front, his tremendous speed. However, uh, DeMarco in the goal was up to the task after he had a couple of timing mistakes. He really settled down, played a great defensive game. I think towards the end of the second quarter, Union did a great job of starting to bring the ball back upfield, and they were starting to test Pingree. Uh, I think they didn't want that uh, first half to end because they were really starting to move the ball. If you notice, we're standing in front of the Union High School cheerleaders. The reason the Union High School cheerleaders will send us to the second half, and when we come back, Pingree with the lead 1-0. Here comes the Union High School cheerleader. If you don't tell your children about the danger of drugs, 
you may find a problem staring you right in the face. A problem that won't go away. Or even worse, one that does. Welcome back to Union High School. You see, we were cheering on Union High, and the referee started the second half. How about that? Don't worry about that. So here we go with second half action. Union and Pingree, and Union now with an opportunity. And again, Pingree's defense looking good. Todd Logio back. Now it is David Shaw, and we may get a corner kick here for Union High School. So how about that? Downstairs with the cheerleaders, and the next thing you know, they start the half on us. But we appreciate the Union High School cheerleaders and that cheer for TV3. Corner kick here for Union, their first of the game. In the middle, watch out for Castro. That ball's headed by Shaw, but headed wide. So the second half underway. Pingree scored first quarter. Peter Ackerman with the goal. And that has held up ever since, and it's 1-0. Those Union cheerleaders leave me breathless. <laughs> John back along uh, side in the booth, and we're ready for second half action. It should be a good one. And Union picking up right where they left off, moving the ball up on offense. So Union will right here take another corner kick. This will be their second corner kick. Again, ideally six to eight yards in front of the net. Great, great corner kick. New goalie in the game for Pingree. We'll get to him after Union here with the opportunity and a goal ball. It yes, is a goal. It, is a goal. it went into the net and slid back underneath and give the goal to Mario Polita. It looked like it was Polita on the goal for Union High School. So the Farmers are tied at one apiece. And look at that, Union finally gets on the board. And we had talked just... We had talked at the halftime how they were doing. You'll see them turn around here. The ball comes across. I believe that is Mary Polita. And you just see it wiggle the net a little bit as it went in. The ball went into the net but went back underneath and came out. And therefore, tough to see whether that was a goal. But give credit to Polita, who scores, had the game winner against Westfield. And in his second year, the senior puts Union and Pingree in a one-all deadlock. And that was scored approximately two minutes in. Approximately two minutes into the first third quarter. And of course, we had said at the halftime that Union had really started to move the ball towards the end of the second quarter. And they were kind of at their wits that the quarter ended because they felt they might lose the momentum. However, they picked up right where they left off, which is surprising. Usually a, a long break like that does take away from it. But Union able to capitalize on two corner kick plays, put the second one into the net. So Polita, whose brothers, Angelo and Rosario, both played here at Union, shows a good-looking foot with the goal, his third of the season. In fact, we saw his brother Angelo at halftime and said, watch out for Mario's second half, and uh, before you know it, Mario gets the goal to even up the game. David Shaw... And his Union High School Farmers right here looking again to be on the aggressive. And this has been a good-looking half as the shot taken on Mike Coughlin, who's in the game now, in the goal, replacing Doug Proudman for Pingree. And we talked several years ago, or last year, Matt and I talked about the American style of soccer. You've seen the American style of soccer, the set plays off of off a restart from a direct kick, a corner kick, uh, an indirect kick, and sometimes even a drop ball or a throw-in. This is the American style where they have the set plays. They run a man in. Here's Castro with a shot. It goes wide. Castro ahead of the Pingree defender that time and missed it wide. And Castro feeling sorry for himself with his head down between his hands. Felt that he should have had that shot. He did have a bit of an open net, but that's tough on a moving ball to really get a good shot. Oftentimes you see it shank. You'll see him turn and he shanks it off to his left foot. Maybe not even a left footed kicker by... Uh, by, uh, by the norm and makes it even tougher to, uh, to turn the ball in like that. So 
Give him credit that he even got the shot off. And Castro has scored some goals for Union. Had two last year, four so far this year. So how about Union? Four and two coming in and coming into the second half. Got a pep talk by Mr. Jim Jeske and scored early to tie it up. And of course, we talk about this every game, although it might be a little early for that. In soccer, if you're tied at the end of regulation, you do have overtime, two 10-minute quarters. They are not sudden death. They are played to the absolute completion of both quarters. Again, we have a long way to go before we even think that. Unofficially, we only have a little over three minutes gone here in this uh, third quarter. So in regulation time, you have the better part of about 35 minutes of soccer left. So uh, a long way to go. And remember, in the first half, Pingree scored first. Ackerman scored about six minutes into the first quarter. We went scoreless the rest of the first half. Now what happens is Union scores here. We'll have to see what happens the remainder of half number two. And again, we have Union here having what looks, appears to be a direct kick. Oh, and it's a great direct kick, bringing it in well inside the 18. Jason Sittman showed the good foot off the direct kick. And Union has just really turned it around here compared to, the, they were so almost lethargic in the first and a good portion of the second quarter. Really picked it up. I don't know what uh, Coach Jeske said to him at the, at the halftime, but it certainly has uh, been effective. They almost do look like a different team out there. They are playing with great enthusiasm and a goal like the goal by Polita really can get a team going. Well, uh, I know one thing I'm almost positive that uh, Coach Jeske said, and, and maybe it made the players realize that they took two unnecessary yellow cards and they tell them hey you guys you're better players than this uh, there's no need for it and uh, they suddenly realize hey we're four and two we've played some pretty tough teams this year what are we doing this cheap stuff for let's go out there and play soccer of course we have many of the union uh, union faithful here tonight I'm, I'm very impressed with the crowd here very nice crowd on a beautiful evening we commented heading down as you see some of that crowd that uh, you can't get a much nicer night than this. The temperatures are in the high 60s and the wind just slightly blowing, but very comfortable and a good night for soccer. We really haven't talked too much about the fact that these teams are playing under the lights. John, what kind of an effect would that have as you see a many here making a fine play and looking to cross? All right, we are going to have a goal kick. Effect it has, number one, I can tell you it has an effect on the referees. It's difficult to see the spin on a ball to judge a foul throw. Although if you're using the type of ball they have here, it's a little easier. If you're using an all-white or a solid colored ball, then it's difficult. There is a little bit of a blur. These lights are to the side, but you do have three sets of light each side of the field. A goalkeeper on a corner kick or a ball coming in from the wing area can be very dangerous. If it gets high in the lights, he can lose it. We talked going back many years ago, uh, uh, Bloomfield lost a county final on a ball that got lost in the sun. Uh, we've been under the lights many times here on TV3. A field like this, this is excellent, excellent lighting. Uh, it's only the second year of the lighting. In my experience with TV3, the only place I remember better lighting is Harrison, and we've been there many, many times at nights before. And uh, the, there's a glare, uh, the multiple shadows, but there's also the psych psychological factor. Most schools in New Jersey play daytime games. There is sort of a psych factor to being under the lights. And I think your teams play, tend to play a more intense game under the lights. But I don't think with these two teams you need lights to have an intense game. Here comes Ackerman. Ackerman controls, makes a fine move, centers it, and a beautiful play by DeMarco to come out. The header was a little weak by the Pingree player inside and DeMarco made the save and clear. Boy, I'll tell you, that was, Ackerman started that play nicely with a nice soft cross. The Union player, I didn't quite see who it was. I believe it was uh, Anthony Bulliari that did it, but he only got a soft header as he was backing up and going away from it. DeMarco was there to make the save, but dangerous nevertheless because it was on net. Get tired. Will Union right? did play on this field last year once. They defeated Rahway 2-0. They have played under the lights in an adjacent field, and they have been successful over at Swastrom Park. Union defeated Pingree two years ago, 2-1. One of the few times Union has ever beaten Pingree. And they also beat Bloomfield four years ago, 2-1 under the lights here in Union as well. 
I think it was three years ago, they lost two to nothing, I believe, to Governor Livingston under the lights when Governor Livingston was the Group 2 state champions. But uh, again, as we said before, ooh, they had a great chance, but I think we had a foul call just before. Just as well, because it looked to me that Proudman made the save after the ball had already ended the net. But the whistle blew, killing the play. Polita is starting to pick it up, and that time it was Polita who was inside, called for the foul. But he was right there looking for his second goal of the evening. Couldn't come at a nicer time when they really have uh, Pingree sort of reeling a little bit. I don't think Pingree, with the big scores they've had, I mean, they've won games by six goals, seven goals, four goals twice. They've only been tested really once when they beat Hun three to one. So all of a sudden they find themselves in a tough ball game and now kind of we'll find out what they're made of. Will Pappas tries to get around a defender and cannot. Anthony Bulliari now looking for Pingree, but a good defensive play again by the Union High School Farmers, Eric Spudnicki there defensively. And our ball ball making a nice trap as it went out of touch. <laughs> One thing Union has done so far, they've effectively checked Scott Ametti, the big scorer. Here comes an opportunity for Union, but back defensively for Pingree was Ned Southworth. Ametti was the big scorer coming in with 12 goals in six games, and so far Union has really shut down Ametti, and he really hasn't been a factor at all. But as we talk, you never know what's going to happen. This this game, you can come from goat to hero, hero to goat, I mean, in, in one play. It's, it's just an amazing game that way. One goal means so much. A relatively low-scoring game by most standards. Tonight, so far, we're seeing a low-scoring game. We're here midway through the third quarter. We have a 1-1 tie. Well-played, hard-played game. We've got a little of everything. We've had fouls. We've had good plays. We've had a couple of yellow cards. Great saves from the goalkeepers. And a lot of speed with Ackerman right up front. Again, such a dangerous ball player. The mark of a great player, as Pingree looked for a many that time, is to be silent for a certain amount of time, and then when the game is on the line, just take over. And Union Amedi with a great that, break here. Amedi has that opportunity. Good defensive play, but then we get a whistle. What happened is you had the good tackle, but as he tackled the man, he came up with the foot, and the trip called. You could let it go, you could call it. I think it was a good call. Tom Russin called on the trip, so we'll get a direct kick here coming off the foot of Robbie Emmel, the four-year starter. His brother Ricky played. He chips oh. it into the middle. Union looking to turn for a shot, and they cannot. And here comes Ackerman the other way for Pingree. Pingree dressed in the blue with the white trim. Union in the white with the maroon trim. Good, hard, physical play. I like this kind of soccer. Nick Voluminous. Shaw. Mike Shaw. Left foots it into the middle, and it will go over the goal line. Shaw did a great thing. We know he plays center halfback. He saw the switch on the play. We have a stoppage for the injury. We saw the switch on the play. He moved to the wing while a man went to the inside, and because he did that, he was open, and he got the long shot off. There is Mike Shaw in your picture, a co-captain at 5'11", 170, a senior, an injured player on the field as well for Pingree, Anthony Bugliari hobbling around, and of course, Anthony, who hobbles to the sidelines, gets the concerned look from his father, who's also in the picture, Miller Bugliari. Well, it's not just a matter of concern. When, co when the clock is stopped and the trainer or coach is beckoned onto the field to tend to that player, that player must leave for at least until the next normal start, as we would with a yellow card. He must leave and be, be a substituted for it. They're not going to play well, short. Uh, sometimes you see the clock stop, but then the guy gets up right away, and, and the coach or the trainer doesn't come on the field. Then we say, okay, let's play. No substitution necessary. That was not the case here. We saw coach and trainer both on the field. So Bugliari moves out to the sidelines, and he'll take a brief break as Ned Hilgendorf comes in, and here's Polita. Alita sends to David Shaw. Shaw with the goalie out of the net, looking to control. It's centered back, but nobody there was there for Union, and Pingree controlled. So again, an opportunity if somebody was there for Union with the goalkeeper out, but the Farmers effectively, again, applying pressure. And again, here, here, here comes Pingree. Every time you think Pingree's down, they suddenly turn around. However, they only had the one man upfield. When he did go to make the pass, 
I believe, uh, no, it wasn't Ackerman, but uh, they just didn't have the man upfield quick enough. Castro ahead to Shaw. Shaw looking to turn on his man. And he Shaw does. controls. Nice play yes, by Mike did. Shaw. Actually did that off balance, but he somehow retained his balance. A Medi now. So it's a Medi and Shaw taking over the game. And we told you with the game on the line, sometimes those great players come to the forefront. That they do. But you know, I noticed a Medi. They see they picked up. They you notice how here we do it again. They go to Ackerman so often. They found out that Ackerman can beat the defense of this Union team. Amenti, who is the, the big star, he sees that. He distributes the ball. He says he likes the one-on-one, -on -one, his ability to distribute the ball. He sees that. He realizes that Ackerman's been able to be pass the defense, and he puts the ball out. These aren't designed. These are instantaneous thoughts. This is what's great about this game. It's a great game of improvisation. Throw in for Union. The Farmers and the Big Blue are tied at one apiece. Ackerman. If I seem to get carried away, Steve, and excited about this game, you're right. I love the game. It's the greatest game on the face of the earth. Why not? And so far, we're seeing a good game. Yes, here we comes are. Ackerman here. And Ackerman looked to make the move with a fine defensive play by Emil. And again, the Big Blue looks to control. We're going to get an offsides call. That it was. I believe that was Ackerman. A little excited on the play, got a little bit ahead of the play. It was about three steps off sides. The ball was launched over the defense. And, of course, Pete Smith right there on the line in proper position to make the call. Usually the offsides are very seldom argued because it's usually an obvious play that everybody sees. And you saw it yourself. That one quite obvious as Ackerman offsides, and now Union looks to control. The Farmers have pretty much taken control of the game, the momentum on their side after Pingree scored early. And of course, here we are uh, a good 14 minutes already, almost 14 minutes into this third quarter, and it's really, for the most part, been all, all Farmers. Gongalvez now looking to make a move, and he still has a good-looking shot here. And coming out of the net to make the save, Mike Coughlin. But a nice play that time by Arthur Concalves. And Concalves did the right thing. He saw that he had two players breaking in. He decided to take the soft shot, the problem, I'm sorry, not problem, that the Pingree keeper would have to come out and make the save on. It. And as they took the shot, as he took the shot, the two players came in hoping for a rebound. So a smart move that time as Coughlin came out to make the save. Mike Coughlin is a junior. Played a little last season. Coughlin did make it all academic once he made the save. But especially at this juncture of the game, you've got to be looking for those rebounds. And as we talked about, taking advantage of the other team's mistakes. Well, that's that's the whole idea of the game. And, you know, since we've been talking, the wind has started to pick up, and it feels like it's a crosswind coming, as as the viewer looks at it, coming right into your face, right into your, right at your TV screen. And that could have a very big effect. On a, on a straight-on shot, the ball is going to knuckle and maybe curve to the goalkeeper's right if it's to the left side of our screen and to the left if it's to the right side of our screen. And uh, if it's coming straight at them uh, into the wind, going away from us, that ball is going to knuckle, and it's going to be a very difficult to make the save. You'll see a ball, when a player kicks it, a lot of English, you can see a ball curve on the width of the field five to six feet easily. With the wind, of course, the temperature starts to go down just a bit as well, and it's starting to get a bit nippy here. Underneath the lights at Union's Harry R. Cook Jr. Memorial Field. This is the same field that the Union High School football farmers play their football game. And as you can see, the field is lined for a football game. But for you soccer viewers that already know, the yellow lines that you see are those of the great chance here. Kudrick with the shot, and it goes wide. And again, turning that ball with the left foot and trying to turn around, and it kind of shanks off the foot. Watch it again, and watch the opportunity for Union. As he turns, he kind of shakes. It's really not that far off net. You can see Coughlin going over there to protect that side of the net, just in case it was on. But as you saw, a little bit wide, and uh, we were all set. Hilgi, be ready to run, Hilgi! Just be ready to run! I 
I'm seeing a little bit of, it, it's, it's a very subtle thing, but I, I see little signs of, of a semi-panic from the Pingree defense. They're turning the ball rather than turning it upfield quickly. I see every now and then a quick pass to the sideline. Oh, you heard us say it before, when in doubt, put it out. And they seem to be kicking that ball to the sideline, not so much a clearing pass to another player. Great break. Owen Neary battling with goalkeeper Dan DeMarco, and it looks like Pingree will get a corner. DeMarco made a bad mistake then. He was deciding he was going to let that ball go out of touch. He was legally charged from behind. Pingree turned around, kicked it into him, and then over the end line. Off the corner, we get a whistle. I believe that's the end of the third quarter. That is correct. So that ends the third quarter. So the corner kick comes up empty that time for Pingree because the clock runs out. And we're heading to the fourth quarter from Union High School. We've got a tie, 1-1 soccer game. You serve part-time in the Army National Guard artillery, and you might practice with a 105 howitzer. Point this gun at a rusty old troop truck five miles away, and you're going to send it straight to truck heaven. So, if you ever have to clear out a field so the infantry can advance safely, a 105 howitzer can do a pretty fair job. Of course, there are times when it just doesn't pay to play fair. Can anything be done about this? Plenty. Don't smoke, watch your weight, your cholesterol, your blood pressure. It's a tough battle, Sam. We've come through tough battles before. The American Heart Sam, Association. I like your attitude. We're fighting for your life. In your picture there, that's Jimmy Young from the Union High School football team. And in case you've been sleeping for the last few days, Union High School lost their opener football-wise to Irvington. Final score was 20 to seven, and one of the reasons was that Jimmy Young was out of the game. Another reason was that Derek Gaddy for Irvington had himself an amazing game, rushing for 211 yards. Union will be back on this football field, in fact, playing under the lights Friday night against Scotch Plains. Pingree High School raring and ready to go for quarter number four. They scored in the first quarter. Peter Ackerman with the goal, but they've been silent ever since. On the other side of the ledger, the Union High School Farmers scoring in the third. Mario Polito with the goal, and we are tied at one apiece. And John Marcy, let's uh, talk about what we should expect here in the fourth quarter. Well, I think both teams have been successful in putting the ball in the net. First and second quarter, first and most of second quarter belong to uh, the Pingree. Part of the second quarter and most of the third quarter belong to Union, almost like they switched uniforms at the half. I look to see both teams. I don't expect to see any big changes. As, as Steve sits here and tries to pick up some of his <laughs> papers, both these teams might try. The wind has changed direction since we talked to you. It's You're now going from our left to right, and it is getting heavy. It's very definitely to Union's advantage. Union may be knowing it, maybe won the toss at the beginning of the game, knows that this win comes up and elected to do this. It does seem strange. Again, we have to talk about overtime. A coin toss could be important with it win. However, we got to get through these 20 minutes of soccer. So here we go with quarter number four. Union will control the move from left to right. And Pingree moves from right to left here. As we're all tied up with one apiece, Union coming in at four and two, and Pingree trying to keep up an undefeated season thus far. They're at six and zero. Oh. One thing the Farmers might do with that wind, and once we see those corner flags, you'll see they're almost standing straight up at the far end of the field there. They Union might try to put the ball in the air and keep the ball up high. Ackerman with again the great breakaway speed. Elias Bethanos back for Union, and here's Bulgari who sends ahead, but now the Farmers control. Here's Mike Shaw, left foot to the head, looking for David Shaw. Out of the goal comes Mike Coughlin to make the save. Coughlin better be careful. He's right on the edge of that penalty area, and Pete Smith is watching him very closely. Keeping an eye on Mike Coughlin is Pete Smith. Coughlin broke his hand against Basking Ridge and uh, has been slow to recover but he seems to be back and seems to be playing pretty well and if you notice 
he does have a hand in sort of a cast as he's playing goal today. Well, I can tell you one thing. It's not a cast because casts in high school soccer are not allowed. We're going to have a stoppage of play. We might be having a card here. It's going to be another yellow card to one of the farmers. I believe that's number... Larry Costa looks to be getting the card here. You can see Pete Smith writing in his book, showing the yellow card that Costa's got it. Again, it's probably for the rough play. Uh, we've seen some pretty hard fouls through most of the second quarter and all through the third quarter, no cards. But again, every now and then, there's a little bit of frustration, and those things happen. So Costa sits down. He's played a real fine game. In fact, remember back to the last quarter when he had a rush on net and almost scored. Well, no question, he will be back in again. Uh, I think Jim Jeske will uh, not sit him down for the whole game for that. One thing I might mention, though, uh, this year, if you received two, uh, I'm sorry, a red card for violent play or conduct, it's the remainder of this game plus a two-game suspension. So in effect, if it happens early in this game, you could have, in effect, a three-game suspension. That is a stiff one. And I think that's great because we've seen in the last two years uh, a trend towards a little bit more contact and, and face it, violence in soccer. And it's got to stop, and I think this three-game suspension or two-game suspension, in effect, it could be three, uh, has stopped quite a bit of I've noticed it this year in my own officiating. The, the kids, they get the yellow card. They calm down real quick. And by the way, John, you can mention violence. This is cable TV. Okay. All right. That's fine. Dan DeMarco comes out of the net to make the save for Union High School. He'll punt it downfield as we're all knotted up at one apiece. Fourth quarter. Well, I, again, I don't see Union taking advantage of that wind like I thought they would, of putting the ball in the air, trying to, trying to almost float it past the Pingree defense. We'll see. Ackerman again looks to try to slip past the Union defenders. He's been sneaky quick all evening long, and he does have the lone Pingree goal. Well, I take nothing away from Amenti, who we talked about in our opener, but Ackerman has really showed tremendous speed. Here comes Mike Shaw. He's dangerous. He's ridden off the ball. No whistle. And rightly so, no whistle. He put a little bit of an act on on that play. Uh, the ball was taken cleanly, and hoping to draw the whistle, he took a dive. Bulliari now controls. He'll look to cross it here, tries to get around a defender. And does. But again, the Union defense is up to the task. And the Union defense has really tightened up after that uh, midway through the second quarter. They really got their act together. And uh, they've been a lot tighter now. Here comes another opportunity and a nice play by DeMarco. DeMarco has done the job, but boy, he gives my heart. To, <laughs> he really he really uses that entire penalty area and makes me a little bit scared. He may know what he's doing out there, but. I guess if I was a coach, I'd, I'd say some things differently, but Jim Jeske has the confidence with 285 wins over the years. I'm not going to argue. If he gets your heart going like it is, how about what he must be doing to Jim Jeske's heart? <laughs> well, Jim runs those marathons. His heart ought to be in great <laughs> shape. Throw in for Union. DeMarco in goal did not start, remember. Mike Shaw started there, and Shaw was in the nets when Pingree scored their goal. And Shaw was not taken out because Pingree scored the goal. This is a trend that Union uses. Shaw goes in the goal for a while, comes out, and now he bolsters up the midfield and the offense. And that's exactly what Jim Jeske has done. Concaves controls. He's had a fine game. Sends to Polita, who's had the goal, and Polita looks ahead. Did a nice job turning that in, too. Conca Concalves has done a really great job tonight. We saw during the third quarter, he made several opportunities during the third quarter. And I, I think... He has been, even though Kalita scored the goal, he has really been the guy that's kind of made that offense go. Some of our younger Union fans up here learning to see what it's all about being a TV announcer and uh, wondering what goes on here on TV3. There's Union with a great, great press booth up here. And they're part of a real nice crowd that is gathered at Union High School for tonight's soccer affair. We're proud to be bringing you the action here on TV3. Steve Mayer along with John Marcy. And we've got some real good soccer heading your way throughout the rest of the year. Johnson, who's undefeated, will take on Governor Livingston on the TV3 Action Arena. We've got Union again next week against Westfield, a rematch of the game earlier this season. 
where the Farmers came up victorious against the Blue Devils, two to nothing. And of course, later this year, we've got Columbia, the Columbia Cougars against Livingston, a much improved team. I'll be happy to take my lumps in that game. John Marcy will be on the field in another capacity, and you could bet that uh, Hugh Albanicius will certainly be critical of my call. And I have to admit that I am on the call of that game as well, <laughs> and I will, I will keep you honest. <laughs> well, it's going to be a very interesting, and uh, I always welcome it. Uh, I, I've said it before, and, and I'm glad to be a part of what TV3 does for soccer, not just soccer, but for all high school sports. And it's, and it's great. We even hear about it outside the TV3 coverage area. I think of kind of blowing our own horn and patting ourselves on the back, but TV3 does like high school sports, and uh, I guess high school sports likes us. TV3 does not like high school sports. TV3 loves high school sports. Well, I think that's what sports is all about in this country. We are going to have another clock stoppage, I believe, and that clock stoppage was a foul throw because Pingree took it from other than three feet from where the ball went out. And this year, if you take it at the wrong spot, it becomes a foul throw. And that's exactly what happened. Here's Ameti. Ameti, the senior, with 12 goals this season. Looking to get around his defender. Sends ahead. Nobody there. And coming out of the goal is DeMarco. DeMarco, a baseball player as well, a first baseman. And that time he came out to make the good play. Crowd starting to pick up. You might be able to hear them in the background as the goat has run across the field. It's, it's really <laughs> not right that the goat should do something like that. <laughs> but what, what happened, I think, is, is somebody stole. took the mask, stole the mask, somebody and ran stole. across the field. Thank goodness did not interfere with play. The fans got a real kick <laughs> out of it. However, I think for the sake of the game, you shouldn't do things like that. Right. It could be dangerous. And I, and I have to admit, I'm very sorry for laughing, uh, but it, it looked funny and, and to the advantage, I guess, of the players on the field and also the situation. Nobody was in that end of the field, and, and he got away with it, and everything's done. But yeah. uh, Look, we see it in Major League Sports. Oh, it happens here, too. <laughs> we see there the, is the dead goat. <laughs> the goat on the far side of the field, and the fan is long gone, so uh, security does not, uh, he left on his own rather than have security take him off the field. And let's hope Bob Barker is not watching. <laughs> oh, Barker. excellent header by uh, Amenti. Here is Ackerman now, and Ackerman, who has been a factor throughout, puts the center inside to Amenti. Again, they were looking for whistles inside was Pingree. Nothing called, and now union control. Well, they, I believe what they wanted was a handball on that. That's very debatable. Uh, and if the referee is in doubt as to whether he should make the call or not, then make no call at all. Don't call the assumption. Only call the factual thing. And uh, we talked again. Hey, they're going to miss him. There's 22 players out there and only two officials. But I think in this case, we've had a hard physical game. The referees, I think, have done a good job. All right, you have a trip there, no question about it. That takes place just outside the penalty area. Pingree's got a great opportunity. You're going to see the wall set. Here's the American style of soccer we talked about, the set play. Let's see if Pingree has a couple of men run past the ball. You'll see him come in. The lead is taken. He turns. Boom. Took his feet right out from under him. No question about the trip. No question about where it's set. What happening now? You're seeing the wall taken 10 yards back. There will be a second whistle. It's taken. Now let's see what happens. Amenti, it looks like, is going to take the kick. Amenti on the ground, and it stays there and goes wide. Here was the set play. Amenti's back there to take the kick. Points to the official to say, Mr. Official, Mr. Official, pointing at that player as the player looks away and starts to move away. Then they kick the ball, trying to take the, trying to take the uh, action away from them. So Pingree that time with an opportunity. Union again with the throw in at midfield. I'm looking to see Union at this point to try to uh, 
get the ball in the air, but they really haven't taken advantage of that wind, and that wind has been a factor which they really haven't taken advantage of. We'll see at this point what they try to do. Some of the fans, some of the fans crossing in front of us here. And that is the disturbance, and we are sorry for it. Some of the fans here just a bit unruly at Union. As the fans will settle down and we'll settle into the final minutes of action here. We and have there's still a tie, 1-1. Uh, we have a 1-1 tie at this point, I would guess, oh, about nine minutes left. Again, that's unofficial, this nine minutes, uh, as the official time is kept on the field. We've got uh, Union on the attack. Nice crossing, bringing it down to the right side. Now there was a great opportunity for the for the farmers. Ball got past the defense, but again, nobody there to take advantage of the ball getting past the defense. But again, Union Union almost seems to be there's a dangerous play. It's going to be a oh nope we call a trip. They get the ball back in play very very quickly. But it seems it almost seems that Union. Smells uh, Pingree getting weaker because they they seem to be a little bit more aggressive on the ball now. You do sense that, don't you? How it, it looks like something's going to happen and something's going to break loose for Union High School. They have been the more aggressive team in the second half that they have, and it really has been two different halves. In the first half, we saw Pingree kind of control the action. Ackerman had numerous break opportunities. Second half, Union's controlled the right. opportunity. Right, they have. And and the opportunities, and they've been there for Pingree. We saw sure. Menti a few minutes ago with the crossing pass. Ackerman with his tremendous speed. But they haven't seemed to be able to take advantage of it like uh, like Union has. Union has controlled the whole tempo of the game, and that's the key. And again, they're going to have the direct kick coming upfield. So Union now... As time runs out, remember, overtime could be in order here. All right. What happens in overtime? We'll have another coin toss just like you would at the beginning of a game. They must take five minutes between the fourth period and the first overtime, which will give us a chance to do some analyzing and <laughs> catch our breaths because this has been an exciting game. Union again with a great opportunity and a little bit of a panic on the Pingree part, pushing the ball over the end line for the Union corner game. Great opportunity for Union. The wind is in their favor. If you get a left-footed kicker, which they don't, if you had a left-footed kicker, it would be swinging in towards the goal. Concavez will take the corner kick. He and sends it's a good it one. The middle. It's a real good one. The ball's loose, but Pingree keeps control and sends it downfield. And that time a scary opportunity for Pingree as the ball was loose. And every coach's nightmare. You had the great opportunity. The ball goes right through. And where was the wing? He pinched in too far not to bring the ball back in again. Again, taking over the play in midfield. Here's Kinkavez, who's played a fine game and shows us the ability to go one-on-one. -on -one. Look at this. Left-footed shot by Elias Pufetos right on goal. Coughlin right there to make the easy save. He's waiting for his defense to move out. He wants to try and change the tempo here. And again, Got go ahead. I'm sorry, but again, you talked about it earlier. Take that shot because you never know what's going to happen. Especially with a wind that's being gusty like this. One minute it's nothing the next minute it's all kinds and in midair keeper can relax and also that gust of wind catch it put it over its head we've seen it right here on tv several times over the years union with the throw in as miller bugliari looks on in his 30th year and he has been through just about every type of situation there is in soccer he's had some great teams over the years and so far this year hey look his team comes in undefeated he talked about the competition, didn't think it was up to par, and knew he was going to be in for a struggle this evening. And, and respect for both these coaches. They go When they get a game outside their conference, they don't pick up a pushover game. Let's take a tough one because that's going to prepare us for the conference play, upcoming county tournaments and state tournaments. And those county tournaments are right around the corner. Shot again for Union. 
Again, an opportunity for Union to get some goals as David Shaw took the shot, but it went wide. I think they called a corner kick on that play. I believe it was last touched by the uh, Pingree defense. It That's didn't look like it was off a Pingree defender, but Union does get the corner kick, and Mario Polita sends it to the middle, and again, a nice play. Coglin Coglin. Coglin got the hand up there on the ball, cleared it out. Coglin made the play to clear it out, but Union was right there again. And the Farmers are getting closer and closer, and the big question is when might they get their second goal? But we're talking about Union, Union, Union. Union has to be careful. Don't get overconfident. Don't bring that defense up too far. Leave one or two defenders back there. You see your sweeper all the way back, 10 yards short of midfield, especially with Ackerman and Amenti, who are both playing up. Neither one of them on defense at all. So Pingree, that tells me Pingree's still looking to some uh, offense because they got the two strong players not even getting involved. But Union has just owned the second half. And another great cross. How many times have we seen, after a team like Union controls all the action, a team like Union falls asleep defensively, and boom, Pingree comes Fast right break, back. Right. And, and there's the goal, and you see how Union outplayed a team like Pingree, yet they come out on the losing end. Right. I mean, that can happen as well. So there are so many different situations, and we have seen it all over the years. And we'll have to see what happens now or the final minutes of this contest. Well, unofficially, we show about Three minutes and 10 seconds left. Pingree with the goal kick. Now they're trying to change the tempo, slow things up a little bit. That's why this delay here. We've had a substitution or two, but believe me, that was by design. Miller Bulyari doesn't have over 300 victories without uh, knowing a few of the psychological tricks of this game. 371 to be exact against 51 losses. What a record. Fantastic, fantastic. And there, again, the defense missed, but no no offensive player there to take up on the miss, although that would have been a tough one. Gorgeous night as we look up at the moon there, Steve. A real fall harvest-type moon. The beginnings of fall, and of course, that means high school sports as you look at the moon, looking over Union. Moon over Union, from the song of the same name. Yes, of course. <laughs> Union brings the ball back in play with a direct kick. And again, boy, they are just, they're just really looking. They, they really haven't had a chance to finish the play, but they certainly have been having the opportunities and they get closer. But again, not giving up. There's a Menti. Keep an eye on him. Number 18 for Pingree. He's been their big goal scorer. Ball kept in, but now it goes out of bounds and Union will get the throw in. And we get closer and closer, unofficially under two minutes left in this uh, regulation time. We're looking closer and closer at our first overtime soccer game of the season. Remember, overtime in high school soccer, and then after the overtime, if the game is still time, that's the way it ends. And for you first-time viewers, in soccer, there's no sudden death overtime. Both overtimes are played to their absolute completion. What happens? At the end of regulation, we take five minutes, call the captains out for a coin toss, we have a coin toss, kickoff, we play two 10-minute overtime, two completion, even if one team scores five goals. Union trying to make one last rush. Here's Polita, the goal scorer. Polita looks to get around his defender one-on-one, -on -one, and he does. Polita, shot, and it goes high. Just went high, and he, again, took the shot with the outside of his foot because you could see on the camera the ball just curving to uh, Polita's right. And that's an indication when he takes the right-footed kick that that, ball was that shot was taken. Yeah, very tough to take a good, hard shot that way, and we've seen it twice today. Once by Pingree and again by uh, Union. A lot of great soccer we've seen tonight. So Polita took the initiative and looked for the goal and shot it just high, but a great opportunity again for Union. And there's still time with uh, Pingree with only about 30 seconds left. You'll see Polita, the outside of the foot, you see the ball curving to his right, to Polita's right, to Coughlin's left. That's the outside of the foot. Tough shot to take. And Coughlin was in good position that time to make a save. Again, the clock unofficial. And as I say that, I hear a whistle which would signify the end of the contest. End of regulation time. We still have overtime to send you to. It has been a good one. Union with the goal in the third quarter to tie it up. And that's where we stand. One apiece as we head to overtime.
Hi, I'm Cecilia Antoinette. I'd like to invite you to a fresh season of new music originating from your hometown. I'm talking about Stage Left, the show that features new musicians and their talents, as well as exciting interviews and monthly calendar updates. So join me on TV3 for a new and exciting season of Stage Left. See you then. man ladies I'm, I'm not trying to be mean but y'all do and then y'all complain the whole time i hurt i hurt y'all going to oprah winfrey show help me Oprah. help me <laughs> like men are you know they act like all the men are happy i'm so happy i stay at home now i'm so happy <laughs> and when women when you get married women act like they helped your life he was in bad shape for a minute <laughs> but now he's happy and you sit there bald with your brain out your head going Yes, I'm much happier now. <laughs> and it's hard to describe marriage. I mean, women can describe it. Women talk to one another. Oh, it's so happy. I'm so beautiful. And I'm just, I feel my life has been filled up. And I, I become one with someone else. You ever see two men talk about marriage? Now, how is it? Man, it, you know, it, it has helped me. It, I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm thinking about leaving. <laughs> it's wild, man. Steve Mayer and John Marcy back in Union under the lights. We head to overtime, and John, read, read what the rules state. Regular season games, which are tied at the end of 80 minutes of play, may, by state association adoption, be resolved by not exceeding two full overtime periods, not exceeding 10 minutes each. A coin shall be flipped prior to the first overtime period. The game shall end in a draw. After those two, these two, after these two periods, if the score is still tied. We are now starting the first overtime. And, uh, John, you read quite well. Just uh, one or two mistakes in there. <laughs> <laughs> Pingree will control here. And the Pingree big blue dressed in the blue. And the white trim. And the Union in the white. And the maroon trim. All tied at one apiece. And we've got overtime tonight on TV3. Folks, you're getting your money's worth tonight. Union scored in the third. Mario Polito with the goal just about two minutes in. Peter Ackerman with the goal for Pingree. At about six minutes and 40 seconds of the first quarter. Some of the Pingree bench looking on, discussing, hey, what do you think is going to go on during this overtime period? And John, what would you say? Well, I think the teams have played this far. I don't see too much of a change in style. Uh, I don't know who won the toys. I would think at the end of this first overtime, the team going from our left to right, which in the second overtime will be Pingree, would be to their advantage. They have the wind at their back. And uh, right now, even though uh, Union has the wind at their back, we have, I believe, an offside on the far side of the field. And uh, Ray Matlos with the call. That's exactly what it is. Uh, Manny looked like he was the guilty culprit there. So Union will take over. You know, nothing wrong with offsides as long as you don't do it too often. And we haven't had too many offsides today. Maybe three or four called during the course of the game. And that's just a little overzealousness. If, uh, you're certainly not going to be offsides if you're not trying. Pingree has come out here in overtime. And I know it's just about two minutes in, but they seem to be the aggressor here. We didn't get to see that, especially in the fourth. Well, uh, the fourth quarter was very definitely a, a dominated by the, the Union Farmers. I think Miller Bulyari had a chance for five minutes to talk to his players and tell them to, uh, you know, hey, you guys sat down. You let Union take the game to you. And that's exactly what they did. They were sitting down during that overtime period in a semicircle down on the field. And when they got up, they got up charged up. It looked like Miller really told them, you know, let's get going here. Let's see some life in the team. And so far, they're doing quite well as there's a shot that goes wide. That was a great shot that just went away. Caught DeMarco going the other way. He started to come back, but by that time, the shot was, it was just barely wide. Very good shot. I think we also have a union injury. We have a clock stoppage. And their coach not called onto the field. We start the clock right back up again. That's an example where you have an injury and a player does not have to leave the game. That last shot off the foot of Tom Loggio, who is a quick player, who showed some good skills tonight at 5'9", 155. Senior is Loggio, and right now Loggio looks to get the ball away from the Union defender, but out of bounds it goes. Throw in goes to Loggio. Is that Loggio or is that Ackerman down there? 
Now that they've changed positions, we'll never know. Now it's Union with the ball. And Calva is trying to make a move. Has it stripped away. But what you do see is Pingree marking a little bit closer now than they did. They seem to be trying to beat Union to the ball, and the first, first team on the ball is usually the one that takes advantage of it. And so far, that's what we're seeing from Pingree. Here's Owen Neary, a junior, controlling. He gets to Logio, who sends ahead. Bulliari in the corner. Out of bounds it goes. Nice job by the Union defense. Tried to take him to the outside. He wouldn't allow it. Turned the ball out back towards the corner. Turned it upfield about 15 to 20 yards and, and kept it at least away from the uh, Union goal for a moment. Here's a Medi. Union defense. Knocks it downfield towards midfield. Union looking to break out here. Great job turning the ball around. Now Union's trying to settle the ball down a little instead of just the kick and run that they've fallen into the, for the last couple of minutes. Folks, we told you this is a great rivalry and it's been everything, every bit of that tonight. We've had a great soccer game here and we've still got another 15 minutes of soccer left before we, uh, we call this one and pack it in. Great break here. Union keeps it in, crosses it to the middle. But again, I believe that's still Coughlin in the goal. Coughlin is still the goalkeeper. Remember, Doug Proudman, the senior, started, but the junior, Coughlin, came in, and he's done a good job. He certainly has been tested a few times. That he has, and especially in the second half. Angry again. It seems to have uh, picked up the wake-up call in between the fourth period and overtime as they've come out on fire. Look at the many. Great footwork. Looks to get to Ackerman, but we'll get an offsides call. Ackerman just took the step a little quickly. That offsides was called by a mentee making that last extra break. Took the timing of, of uh, Ackerman off, who had already broken in towards the net. He couldn't correct it in time. The pass is made, and he's caught offsides. Take nothing away from a mentee, though. He did, he did get past two players to, to get up there to make that pass. Union with the throw-in from about midfield. Union rich in soccer tradition, 11 conference finals. They have been to the state final four times in the last 11 years. Mike Shaw now for Union looking to make a move, but it's taken away by Pingree. Uh, you're going to get a bit of a Pingree, I mean, a bit of a Union push from behind on that. And of course, like every good player, who, me, ref? Polita did come <laughs> from behind, and... Yes, he did, and of course, Polita, we talked about, Polita's had a great game, has that one goal for the Farmers. That time, Kukavas looked to get it ahead to Polita, the ball out of bounds. Union lost uh, four times, I should say, in the state final in the last 11 years, played Columbia twice, Lost to Westfield in a game we'll always remember. Nothing, nothing tie. Went to 15 penalty kicks. Also lost to Livingston in the Section 2 Group 4 Final 2-1. So they've been there before, and they hope to get back there again yeah, this I, year. Yeah, I believe when they say finals, those are those are sectional finals, sectional not the, finals. Not the uh, state championship game, because these are all teams that are within their section. Exactly. Columbia twice, Livingston, Westfield. Not only that, Westfield's in their same conference. This watch on conference uh, has... We've noted about uh, Union plowing through the decade. Well, certainly the, uh, the farmers have a tradition in soccer that has been a little bit overshadowed by... Uh... Oh, great, great chance. A many inside had the chance of... The game. <laughs> I won't say a lifetime. I will say the game. As a many who has scored 12 goals had a perfect opportunity right there. And again... Menti certainly now making his presence felt. DeMarco tried to get his foot on the ball. There, Menti, you see, just puts it over the right corner of the net and uh, just kind of threw his hands up and disgusted himself, but uh, take nothing away, he got the shot off. Nobody there. Union throws in. Union with six starters back from last year, an experienced team. And Pingree starts mostly seniors in their lineup as well. So both teams with the experience, they've been in situations like this before. Polita throws in. 
both these teams not really showing a tremendous amount of panicking or anything. Uh, experienced teams. The fans, as, as you've heard, have been very vociferous in this game. The players not being affected by it. The officials not being affected by it. The bench players are the coaches. They're just going about their business. That's the sign of a good, experienced team. And that's what we're seeing out here today. I think what you're going to see back on the play is a bit of a... Uh, I think what I think we're going to have here is our first yellow card to a Pingree player. And that's exactly what it is. Tom Russin will get the yellow card here. So what happened, what happened was Russin, after the play, I think out of frustration, kind of grabbed the union player and threw him to the not so hard as to constitute a red card. The right thing was done. Give him the yellow card, tell him to calm down. He's got to come out of the game and come in at the next substitution. Owen Neary comes in for Tom Russin, who leaves. Russin, the goalkeeper on the Pingree lacrosse team, is again union with a shot. That time a shot for Arthur Concalvez and it goes high. And again, we started out this first overtime with Pingree taking it to Union. Now it's slowly shifting back towards Union again. <laughs> Speaking of shifting, we've now got the wind back in our faces again as it's been a very strange night weather-wise. Uh, still good for soccer. I mean, beautiful clear night, moon, stars, but the wind shifting making it very difficult on the players. Nobody can really read that wind. David Shaw will sit down now for the Union as Jim Jeske makes some changes to keep some players fresh. Well, there's only about unofficially a minute left here in this first overtime period, and I think Jim Jeske getting some of those first-line players rested up for that last 10 minutes. And, of course, that last 10 minutes, that last 10 minutes, Union's going to have the wind in their face. And uh, it seems... Union would be the fresher team because it seems to me they've done a little bit more substituting today than, than the big blow. Here's Scott Ametti, and as we told you, the first overtime nearing a close, so this might be a last-ditch opportunity as the ball is out of bounds. Now what we have here is a dangerous play. The Union player played it while he was on the ground with a man within six feet of him, and that's exactly what they call it. It's an indirect kick. See the referee with his hand held over his head for the indirect kick. So Pence will send towards the middle. Ball still high in the air. Polito looks to control for Union and does. Ball still looking towards the center of the field for Pingree, but Union knocks it downfield. So Union that time averted a possible opportunity for Pingree. Our unofficial watch has gone off upstairs, and now the official whistle has gone off downstairs. That's the end of the first overtime period. No scoring there, so we head to the final 10 minutes. It should be exciting as Pingree and Union remain tied at one. power of positive programming. From the people who brought you CNN, Headline News, and Superstation TBS. Classic movies, original programming, special events, Turner Network Television, TNT. Coming this fall, only on cable. There's lots of great TV on cable this fall. Catch it all in The Cable Guy. Romance, danger, impossible feats. We've got action to keep you on the edge of your seats. Then for the whole family, classic tales, adventure, and old-fashioned fun. And great variety shows, music, comedy, and much more. So turn to The Cable Guy for what's on, when it's on, and where it's on. And look for our special fall preview issue coming in October. Some of the younger fans on the field right now as both teams break their respective huddles. We're tied at one apiece. Union High School and Pingree. Soccer action from Union. Under the lights and John, we head to 10 more minutes of action in what has been a good game. Has been a good game. Last couple of years, we've talked about Union County soccer. Westfield in 1986. Scotch Plain, 1987. Maybe Scotch Plains again in 1988. 
Uh, today we have the Union Farmers, who's in the same conference with both those teams. You've got some great soccer here. Not in the coverage area, but you also have Elizabeth High School. You have fantastic soccer in Union County. Tonight we're seeing some of that great soccer. An ex-Union County team, but still carrying on some of that Union County tradition. The Pingree Big Blue Slash School. Both goalies have played well. Dan DeMarco on the side for Union, and Mike Coughlin on the side for Pingree. And this will be a big 10 minutes for both of those gentlemen, as Union and Pingree fight it out. One team looking to stay undefeated. That's Pingree. They came in at 6-0. and Union came in at 4-2, and and here we go. And Pingree, right off the bat, has themselves a direct kick. Got a handball against Union Farmers. Pingree's going to take the ball from about 10 yards past midfield. They chip it up towards the middle. Ball headed out nicely. And Good defensive play the defense by Robbie a, Emmel. The defense did a nice job on that one. Anthony Bouyari controls for Pingree. Right side looks to get it to the middle, but nobody there. And Mike Shaw controls and sends it downfield. Again, these teams showing so much poise. I'm really impressed with what I've been seeing here tonight. Uh, you're, you're seeing a grade of soccer that you might see in some Division III schools. You're not, you're not seeing a grade of soccer that you normally see in high school. It's been a hard-fought game. There's been some yellow cards, not from a nasty, dirty game, just to let's keep it under control. Ackerman into the middle, and Loggio was there. Couldn't control it with the left foot. Here comes a shot up for grabs. Ackerman there. So is goalie DeMarco. And a great save. Great save by DeMarco. DeMarco saw it coming in. It was just tremendous. He saw, he saw, I believe, I think it was Pappas that he saw coming in on him, and it was a race. DeMarco got there first, smothered the ball, protected it with his body, and went down. Well, let's see whether it was Pappas who wears number 10. Here comes the first shot. Michael Pence there. And here comes Pappas along with uh, Menti, and DeMarco makes the save. Uh, DeMarco did a nice job. He makes the save, turns his back, smothers the ball with his body. Keep that ball away. Hey, even if you've got to get hurt. Great, great. Uh... So DeMarco, a baseball player, first baseman, also a wrestler here at Union High School. And he comes up big as the goalkeeper tonight, doing a nice job. And DeMarco, that time I talked earlier about him coming out of the net when I thought he shouldn't. There's a time he came out of the net, no question he should have. He did a nice job. Just and sometimes it pays off to be aggressive. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. It's when you get tentative, It's that's when you get in trouble. Pap is taking the throw in. With the throw in rule this year, you're not seeing as many of the long runs like we've had in the past, but uh, certainly the throw in is a great offensive weapon. Throw in now will be taken by Anthony Bugliari. Gets into Loggio. Here's Tom Russin. It's knocked away Loggio, back for it. We've talked about Anthony Bugliari, Miller Bugliari's son. Not the first time we've seen uh, fathers coaching their sons. We've had uh, a few years back, we talked about George Stiefbold of Verona, one of our another great active coaches in the state, with his two twin sons, Scott and Jeff. And I think a great example of a father coaching his son is at Columbia, where Gene Chiswick coaches Gene Chiswick Jr. That he does. That he does. Doesn't it seem strange that it's also the great coaches that also, all three of those great coaches in the state. It's nice to have the good coaching when you're coming up through the elementary schools and the junior high schools, and you know the system, too. That certainly helps. Well, just mentioning those coaches, some of those players over the years, New Jersey soccer, nationwide recognized as one of the top-notch soccer areas in the country. If not, maybe the world at this level. I was joking Miller about having a son on the team, and he says, hey, we go at it. We go at it on the field. Right now, Pingree going at it with a many, and it's steered aside. Robbie Emmel again came out to make the defensive play. Emmel so far this year hasn't been a goal scorer at all. You say, hey, hey what are you talking about? He's a sweeper, but he can score goals. Oh, yes. And this year is doing the job defensively, as we saw right there. Great throw in that time. Again into the middle, opportunity, and it goes wide. That one looked like it might have been off a foot of a Union player. In front, a host of blue shirts and white shirts, and it looks like it went off a blue shirt, I believe, uh, and it will be, be a goal kick. From the referee's point, it had to be a blue shirt because we do have the goal kick. 
And we sp speak of these good players here, just a mile or so in back of us is Barchers Grove, where it's a great tradition of soccer, home of the Union Lancers, also home of the national 18 and under champions. The Lancers winning that championship, some great players in this New Jersey area, no question about that. Loggio with a shot into Marco makes the save. Had to scoop it up, but a tough play. That no is. rebound there. That's a very, very tough, that, that short hop, just like it is in baseball for the infielder. Same thing in uh, soccer. And of course, this, base, uh, this ball is a little bit slipperier than a baseball, and it tends to skip a little bit, so you really have to be on your toes. We'll keep an eye on the time for you unofficially right now. About four minutes and 45 seconds to go. We're tied at one. We're in the second overtime. If we remain tied after this overtime, that's the way it will go down in the record books. But certainly this has not been a game where it's a tie that it's like kissing your sister. This has been a really good soccer game. Really good crowd here. Really good soccer. Everything you could ask for in a soccer game, except maybe from the standpoint of the two teams and at this point that's a victory right there almost a golden opportunity for Pengry Ackerman looked to go on size again Ackerman is right there the action here in both overtimes have Ooh. been controlled by Pingree. here comes Union though on the break here's Shaw Shaw sends to Polita Polita has to go back for the ball it was behind him here's Mike Shaw and it's a save in front, and now the Pingree defender kicks it aside. Shaw was there, so was Polita. No goal for Union there, and Castro's header now is going to be taken by Coughlin. Players are down and limping all over the place. All right, and we have a clock stoppage for the injury of the Pingree, who was injured earlier on in midfield, but even with the injury, saw the Union breakaway, came all the way back upfield. Now he's down, it almost appears like he has a Charlie horse or a cramp. He seems to be pointing to his left thigh. It's Ned Southworth, a sweeper, a senior, six foot 150, a lacrosse player, hails from Milburn, New Jersey. We really haven't told you too much about where these players are from throughout the evening. Remember, Pingree is in Martinsville, but many players on the Pingree team hail from our TV3 area. Jim Jeske looks on, we're approaching the final minutes of what has been a real good high school soccer game. Tied at one, Southworth now will have to come out of the game. And I think, think the referees judged, and probably rightly so, that at the time of that whistle, the goalkeeper had possession, although he was about to clear it. So because there was a possession on it, Pingree will take the ball on an indirect kick. At this point, it's almost identical to a goal kick. It's in almost the same spot. So Union had the opportunity that time to score a goal that would put them ahead but the defense led by that man, Ned Southworth, was really strong that particular time, and they kicked it away. Coach has said stay right here because Southworth's going to go back into the game again today. He's just a uh, little winded with a Charlie horse or a cramp. And uh, with Union suddenly uh, starting to make some moves here late in this uh, second overtime. Nick Voluminous is ridden aside. Tackle made there, and a ball out of bounds. Voluminous complaining just a bit, wanted a foul call. Oh, I think I think what happened, the hit really came after the ball went out of touch. And we're gonna have a goal kick. But uh, the Union player wasn't looking for that. He wanted a push from behind or a charge. But I think the non-call was probably Southworth does come back in, so his injury obviously was very minor. Hey, he said, this doesn't hurt me a bit. I'm gonna give it a try again, and he runs back hey, in. And hey, we've got a team that's trying to take our unbeaten streak away from us. I'll play with uh, two injured legs. Unofficially, we have about 2.45 left here in the second overtime. So we'll see in the last couple of minutes whether either team can get that one last ditch effort. Here comes Pingree. Bulliari and a whistle outside for tripping on Union. That's correct, good call on it. Bulliari went down. And I believe, no, I thought for a minute he was going to give a card, but no card given at that point. So Pingree now with a chance. Nice inside the 18. Ackerman goes up for it. Not cleared yet. Eh, ball went up in the sky a little too much. Cleared out for the goal kick. Will Pappas right there with the shot. And here comes the goal kick now for Dan DeMarco. 
Emil sends it down towards midfield. David Shaw looking to go after it for Union. Ball's up in the air and headed. Pingree comes down with it. Bulyari looks for Ametti. Again, the ball up in the air. We get a whistle this time. I think what we saw there was as he came down, he kind of threw the arm a little bit and uh, called for the Pete Smith right there. The referees, you know, naturally I'm the referees, but they've done a nice job keeping this game, which has been a physical game, under control. Judiciously issuing those yellow cards where necessary, letting the players play, but by the same token, not letting them play so hard and so rough that somebody gets hurt seriously. Game coming towards a close. A lot of soccer here this evening from Union under the lights. Union with the goal in the third quarter. Mario Polito with the goal for Union. Now we get a whistle, and with time running out, Union tries to get the ball back in play quickly. Union might have an opportunity here, but the header by Polita and the save by Coughlin, and he sends it ahead. Polita very angry with himself. He wanted that header to go more towards the golf, the, the goal mouth. He had Coughlin coming out towards him, and he wanted to clear it the opposite way, catch Coughlin going the wrong way, and it looked like he had Shaw coming in there, but... The header slipped off the side of his head and an easy save for Coffey. Time right here under at the minute. essence, and we believe under a minute. So one team looking to get that last opportunity right here. It looks like it will be Pingree, but Union steers it aside, and now the whistle blows, and we get a foul. I thought that could have been the whistle signifying the end, as Emil will send it in. Clock coming towards a close on the contest, as Union looks to get one more opportunity here, we're going to get a yellow card. And the yellow card. It's against Will Pappas, the senior. So Emil will shoot it downfield. Only about five to ten seconds left in the game. In fact, I see the referee looking at his clock. And Emil put up ten fingers, so that must mean ten seconds. Emil sends it down. Pingree sends it aside. And we're going to end in a tie as Emil will control the ball and both teams leave tied at one apiece. And that's it. <laughs> so Ackerman scored early for that man's team, Miller Bulyari, but there's Jim Jeske who has gotten the goal from Mario Polita, and that goal earned Union a one-all tie from Union. When we come back, we'll talk with both respective coaches. They've been here before. We'll find out what it's like to leave here with a one-all tie right after this. Talking to the animals at the Turtleback Zoo. Every living creature's language, so I can speak to all of them on sight. Welcome back to Union. The final score again, Pingree and Union end in a one-all tie. Miller Bulgari, let's talk a little about this particular game and the fact that you scored first and then afterwards your team found it tough to put it in the back of the net, but yet you got out to an advantage and you were able to hold that advantage till the second half. I thought we came out very strong. I thought we got a goal and we had a couple of fine opportunities. I thought the first half was all ours, second half was all theirs. Uh, it was one of those games. Uh, they took the momentum away from us. Uh, they moved the ball better than we did in the second half. I thought the first half from our standpoint was, a, was one we could have gotten a couple of goals. And I thought they could have gotten a couple in the second half. You leave here with a tie. Psychologically, what does it do for your team? Well, I think if we had uh, dominated the game, uh, I would have been upset. But I think it was a pretty even game. So, uh, you, you know, you, you, you like to win the game. We had our opportunities and we didn't do it. But certainly it's a fine union team. Miller Bugliari, the head coach of Pingree tonight, a one-all tie, and congratulations Thank if you. congratulations are in order. Jim Jeske, the head coach of Union High School. And Jim, what we saw tonight was a real good high school soccer game. 
Well, it was a super game. Uh, every time we play Pingree, we have these type of ball games. Uh, there was a lot of talent on the field, both sides. Uh, we used 12, 13 different starters in and out and 16, 17 players. And I'm sure uh, we also have uh, Pingree subbing in and out. So there are a lot of fine ball players on the field tonight. Miller brought out a very interesting point, the fact that they seemed to control the first half. Your team dominated the second half. You got the goal off of the Polita foot. Let's talk about that goal and what it did for your team at the time. Yeah, well, we were coming back. Earlier, like you said, uh, Pingree dominated that first uh, 15 minutes. They could have had a couple goals in there, maybe even uh, three advantage. Uh, but then we turned around and we got it to tie. And then we had opportunities, as Miller said, we had opportunities to get two or three. That could have been a 3-3 ball game, 1-1, one, 3-3. One, three, three. I asked Miller this, what does this do for your team? Well, uh, we play this tough schedule day in and day out, and we're looking forward to another ball game with Pingree at the end of the year. And we have Corny coming up next week, and uh, uh, we try to play the best, one of the best schedules in the state. And uh, it's another hard-fought ball game for our, our team, and uh, we're looking forward to, again, playing Pingree and all the other hard teams on our schedule. Jim Jeske from Union High School. Once again, congratulations. Okay, thank you very much. John Marcy was here right throughout, and what we saw tonight was a real good soccer game. Both teams had their opportunities, Union with the goal to start off in the second half, and it looked like if you had to give an advantage, and I hate to do it, it looked like Union had the advantage this evening. Well, it's, it's the stuff that rivalries are made out of. I would probably give the overall advantage to Union. They were the home club. They had the fans behind them. But... Uh, the whole game overall was just just fantastic. Uh, you, you saw the ebbs and flows with Pingree taking taking advantage early on, then uh, Union coming back. Uh, admire both coaches, excellent coaches. They go outside their conference play, and they don't pick up some soft uh, thing to pad the victory side. They want the tough games. Jim Jeske just said it. We want one of the toughest schedules in the state. That's how you become good. That's how you have great soccer teams. And what you've seen is just the continuation of one great rivalry. Union is now 4-2-1 and one on the season, and Pingree falls to 6-0-1 oh on the year. Once again, in overtime, the final score, Pingree 1 and Union 1. For John Marcy, I'm Steve Mayer. Thanks for watching the Action Arena. Hello.